Okay, everyone, we are ready for Scooter's Artie Lightfoot run. Everyone, give some love in the chat for Scooter for doing that singing performance during Sonic R. That was a huge deal, and we really appreciate it. Lots of fun. Let's get to it. All right, that means I am live. Hello, everybody. Hello, I'm back again. Surprised to see me? I bet you are. Not really. Hi. So, thankfully, I don't have to sing throughout this one. And it took me a little bit to set everything back up because in order to capture this is a different, totally different everything from what I did a minute ago. So I had to calm down my nerves and to come back to this. But hey, I can talk about the game more instead of just singing through it. <laughs> so already left foot here. It's, well, I skipped over it, but already left foot is a game by, I don't know if it's going to show it here or not. Oops. I don't know if it's going to show it here or not uh, by Titus. You guys probably know Titus the most for the most for Superman 64. So I know it doesn't really set a great precedent, but it's actually a pretty decent platformer. Anyway, enough rambling, let's get started. So the game will start when I hit when I basically hit start on game select here for timer. So three, two, one, start. So the game itself here, uh, for controls, it's very, it's oddly enough, very simple. It's kind of Mario World idea for a platformer of you have effectively have two buttons. You have jump and you have, and you have other. Already has a pretty standard jump and another one of his actions we'll see coming up here and later stages when it gets to that point, which is kind of a pogo spring, which acts like the, which basically acts like the, uh, trying to think of it. Also, I'm going to skip this cutscene just for sa marathon safety. There's no, there's no written or spoken dialogue, thankfully, but for safety. I lost my train of thought already. But yeah, I basically have a pogo spring that works, that works exactly like the, uh, that works exactly like the cane from Ducktales. Use it to step on enemies. The hitting, the hitbox on it's a little off. Also, the little friend behind us, his name is Peck. P E C. Uh, as it demonstrated there, he basically acts as a free hit. He basically is your mushroom. You don't get anything beyond a mushroom for this game when it comes to power-ups. Luckily, every time you see a chest, that will refill Peck if you're missing him, but if you but if you don't have Peck, you get 10 stars, which is the equivalent of coins. Anyway, a little preview of our boss, front, boss man here we got coming up. Also, as much as I will be skipping cutscenes for the most part, this game is heavily relies on cutscenes, but there's also a lot of differences in this game between the US and between mainly US and international versions, more or less. There's a couple moments of there's a couple moments of light gore, I'll say. Not really terrible, like basically skeletons that they've removed, but there's a few things that they've removed from the game for for enjoyment of other audiences and because I'm rushing that stuff's gonna kind of happen like I said I did things to for marathon safety because this game is oddly precise and oddly hard anyway um, I guess while I'm going through this and kind of get my concentration back do we have anything to mention or talk about Oops, sorry. I need to have something else. Okay. Of course, I died right before a checkpoint here. But also, something else with this game is that the, uh, the soundtrack is really good. Like, it kind of has a little bit of a... I know we just got done with Sonic, but it has a little bit of Sonic Syndrome in that... It has a, a tiny bit of Sonic Syndrome in that... The soundtrack helps carry this game a lot. The respawning of my extra hit, by the way. I suppose I should clarify, the extra hit works like a mushroom, but it's also your effective fireball. Or fire flower, at the same time. Uh, something to add on top... Uh, something I should add on top of that is... The, uh... Is the... 
you can't just jump on enemies normally like you would in a normal Mario game. You have to effectively do the pogo jump. So it's more akin to DuckTales than anything else. Also, hop in this minecart. Hop into my cart if you want to play it safe, just duck the whole time. Because if you hit a wall while in this minecart, or if you don't get in the minecart to start with, this it's an instant death, no questions asked. This, you basically hit the edge of the screen, get scrolled off, and lose. Anyway, I think we're safe to now not do it, because even though this scene, even though this is this is the cutscene right now, but even though most of this level is holding down followed by cutscene. This is also the boss level. So you get to see kind of the quote unquote complexities, we'll say, of a boss level. So I will say like, kind of like I said earlier with Sonic R, much like this game, much like Sonic R was a game I played way too much of a child and I know was bad. This game is not as bad, but the, uh, it's not as bad as Sonic R was, but it is also a game that I played way too much of. Also, this boss fight... Oh boy, gonna mess up the cycle. Ah, there goes my hit. Thankfully I have that. This boss fight kind of sucks because it's the ceiling tiles are RNG, and you can probably phase through some of the ceiling tiles, but... You can probably phase through some of the ceiling tiles, but... Or if you get the spacing right, but you kind of have to watch the ceiling and then time his hits here. Also a move that I guess I could show off here, Invincibility. You could also do that too if you want to. The manual for this game talks about being in, have that invincibility period, so to say. But it really doesn't explain practical purposes of using it. Also, when an enemy is like that, uh, changes color like that, they pretty much have one to two hits left. For our mole friend here, Grounder, it is one hit. Also, that crown can still hurt you on the way back. And with that, that's the first of Mystic Gems. You know, something could be said, like a, like a deep-seated thing with Sonic again, is that I keep playing games that have woodland creatures searching out for gems. Anyway, I'm gonna get some, gonna get some stars here, try to get some safety hearts here. But this portion here. Uh, this portion they got do you doing here is prep for something coming up. Also, oh, not yet. Dang it, not yet. Yeah, I'm prepping myself for something that's coming on later in this level. Also, killer toma killer apples. You've heard of killer tomatoes? Killer apples. Also, have to restart the stage again. Ugh. <laughs> Sorry. I, I I know I apologize way too much for my own good, but. I am still nerve shot from the singing, and I am still, um, and it's still early, early enough morning for me where I'm still kind of waking up. But anyway, this is what I talk about. Peck has power ups. This one is effectively like a cape, except you make him do this thing where he becomes a balloon and you ride on him. Anyway, that's all we get from that. Now, coming up here, anybody who had rented this from a store as a kid is going to come up on what I feel is the hardest part of this game is this jump. If you have Peck as your hit, you don't have to worry too much, but basically it's a pixel-perfect jump to get over this pit. But if you have that extra hit, you can kind of just cheese it out. Anyway, we'll be reintroduced to that character during the cutscene in a minute. Basically, she stole the Forest Guardian gem, we'll say. It's all about finding gems in this. We're literally playing a, we're literally playing a Sonic again. Anyway, vertical scrolling levels do lend itself to this game in the fact that you've got this tail move. So, this tail move uh, helps the game kind of keep its pacing up. Also, the timing on using it's a little weird. Oh, wait, I have to wait for him to come down because we have to do this part. Uh, this part, thankfully, very easy. Just basically be on the opposite side of the cannons before they even fire, and you'll probably uh, avoid all damage from these. Anyway. Now, this boss fight coming up here is is kind of 
notorious for if the jump in the level before didn't didn't mess you up, this boss fight has a habit of also being a problem. But the boss fight boils down to something simple as play mind games with the boss. Dang it. I jumped down too early. The boss is going to get faster as we go along. We're basically waiting for, for her to jump on a switch so we can jump up this switch and at least get a couple hits in. Now, if I wanted to play games of cat, cat and mouse with her a little bit, I could bait her into up into higher platforms. I could bait her into a higher platform and basically get like three to four hits all the way down. But we're going to just do it. We're just going to do it this way. Oh boy. You ever just get read by a video game? Because I just got read by AI, so to say. And it's happening again right here. <sighs> Thankfully they knew this boss fight was gonna be rough, so they do give you they do give you lies at the start of this boss fight every single time. Anyway, I need to yeah, my nerves are still getting to me a little bit, so I need to just slow down and let the game play itself a little bit first before I do anything. Anyway, she's going to move faster now. And I've got the cycle off. Thankfully. There we go. First try. First, first try every time. So yeah, there, there are... I think one of the major key differences in the game is coming up here after this uh, in-game cutscene plays and we skip the next cutscene. I guess to give a little context here, let me do this. There we go, context given. We're basically going to get eaten by a giant land worm. But coming up here where there's going to be... Coming up here where there's going to be a, uh, a, where the gem is going to be, we're going to collect the gem in the level here. But basically where, where the uh, gem shows up is where it would be, uh, would have been a pile of bones, which is a, which a special, uh, a special sprite created for the, in this game. That is basically the bones of the lady we were just, ch got done chasing down. Uh, let's see. Now this is dangerous because you can... Oh, yeah, I was worried about that. You can use the uh, vine here, so to say, to go down, go down safely, but it's kind of Mega Man spec scenario. Yeah, she's not just passed out down here in the international version of the game. She actually is. She's actually just a pile of bones. Anyway, jumping from, uh, we'll say vines, but jumping from vine to vine in this game is a little, is a little weird because it basically, you're basically. Pulling yourself forward is the best way I can describe it. So you basically want to face the way you're going to jump. Unlike a lot of games where you jump off of what you're on. Anyway, we got saved by this dude, basically. Which we'll get more acquainted with in due time. I'm skipping a lot of things because cutscenes. Anyway, the Ancient Pyramid. Uh, It's a level that I have... Especially this opening part I have a lot of problems with. There's a good chance that... There will probably be a there will good, a good chance that there will be a game over of some kind in this level, just because these pyramid levels are, other than one level later on, are probably the hardest thing. Also, just to be safe, I am getting rid of these enemies carrying torches, and it, the enemies carrying torches are going to be lighting up this area. Oh boy, that's my ride. Not really. Okay, wait, jump over. But thankfully, we can... Thankfully, we have a little bit of a saving grace over here. Anyway, I'm going to get my hit back really quick. And I think we don't need the bombs yet, but we do have to use the bombs in this level that are coming down these conveyor belts. We do have to use these bombs for this kind of thing right here. We did this in the tutorial, thankfully, or the prologue, so to say. But we have to use bombs to blow open passageways, and I think we need a second one, too. Now, uh, going forward here, especially when we see a specific character, I want to say. Also, safety save. Oh, boy. 
Um, when we see a specific, uh, an, uh, I guess, enemy, we'll call him. When we see a specific enemy, we'll, we'll want to... We will want to take a... We will want to take precaution on any... Uh, any chest coming up here, which is normally a saving grace, so to say. But... Uh, I guess it's the next level. But we do want to avoid it because there are basically tinctures or tonics coming up that will basically reverse our controls. And I'm surprised that they get hit by that. Oh yeah, that, en that, that enemy slash character. That'll make sense in due time. So, as much as I should probably... As much as I should probably uh, take as many treasure chests as possible, I'm going to avoid them for this level because even though I can adapt on the fly, so to say, especially because I need some of those hits. Wait, okay, that's the treasure chest. Okay, nothing, not, not that one. So that treasure chest that the mouse jumped off of, dang it, the treasure chest that the mouse jumped off of is going to have a tonic that, ba like I said, does reverse your controls. And this level does have two paths you go on, so I could be safer so to say, and go on the lower path, but that also has instant death crushing spikes, so to say, and I'd rather take my chances up here. Also, Mimics. Because what game isn't great if it doesn't have a Mimic? Anyway, I think this chest over here is going to be safe to get. I don't know if it's just uh, more stars or if it's a, it's a refresh of my buddy. Okay. Um, let's see. I'm trying to think. I'm trying to think and also come up for conversation. Uh, although I will say, uh, I kind of was, have been about in the chat more or less during basically at this time yesterday as well. But can I just, uh, say really quick that you guys have kind of been blowing things out of the water with all the donation incentives and goals. Like, I, ah, oh, dang it. And my controls are reversed. I actually picked up the chest that would be the reverse of, that would be the undoing of the reverse controls. But I think the controls will go back to normal once we get to the boss here, so maybe not. There we go. But you guys have been blowing things out of the water, and I am amazed. Like, I put forth that, uh, I put forth the Sing the Sonic R songs thing. I put forth the, the Sing the Sonic R songs thing as kind of a, Joke incentive, to be honest. Not thinking we would meet it. And then you guys crushed it within the first two hours. Anyway. This part is going to be a little rough because we have to... We basically have to chase down our mouse friend because he has the gem. And I didn't get the quick the quick cycle on him. So this may take a minute because I have to chase him down and touch him effectively. But we have to tucker him out first. There we go. So, flip the lock back and forth between topics. But you guys have crushed a lot of expectations I had. I know, I know I said this last night, too. Anyway, say hi to Indiana Jones wannabe. He's dead now. The game actually locks you to that. The game actually does lock you to that screen until you kind of like sit there and think about, huh, a man just died. Now, actually, funny thing. Uh, about this level, back in the original, back in the original uh, Mario Mario Maker, I actually, I actually was, I actually wanted to, I actually recreated this level in the original Mario Maker. But this level has another split path scenario, and I'm also being very cautious as I run here. It has a split path scenario, but it also has, um, oh boy, it has probably what what can be. What I'm going to say is one of the easiest. It's it's one of the easiest bosses in this game. If you know the cycle. But also one of the hardest bosses in this game. Because he covers so much of the screen with his attacks. Also, I'm going to take the safety checkpoint. I'm going to wait for him to throw a barrel. Um, so, fun thing about these guys. When they throw their barrels. Is that... Is that uh, every time they, when they even have the barrel above their head, when they have the barrel above their head, they, 
they are invincible during that period of time. They are, they are invincible during that period of time. Oh boy. Oh, well I got the hit, but also I'm on cycle. Let's see. Let's see. Jump. Ah, dang it. That's the bad problem because he is attacking. He's also, he's attack, uh, Gilson here is attacking while he's swooping. So you kind of have to, you can hit him while he's swooping down like this, but it is so much of a risk. Anyway, he'll get more attacks later on. Anyway, I think we're almost, yeah, we're down to his last hit. I'm just going to take a bit of a safety move and stay above him. I hate that the boss that I have the most trouble with, Gilson, is the boss that I have the easiest time with. Speaks a lot for what's coming up for this run. I did mention it before, but throughout this level, we've been mo moving towards a castle, as you can see in the background there. And that'll be kind of becoming a set piece of everything here for the next few levels is we're basically working towards that castle in the background so the castle is going to get closer and closer in the background as time changes and anyway, we have our own pirate ship now the isle of ruin uh thankfully these don't hurt you and i missed an and i missed a chance to go on the upper route so thankfully i'm more familiar with the lower route in this level the Isle of Ruin has se several things that I'm not a fan of. A one for one, these spears that come out and a bunch of tricky jumps. A bunch of tricky jumps that involve jumping on moving items. And how they did moving platforms in this game with these items is not the best, <laughs> I'll be honest. Like, landing on it, landing on stuff you kind of slide off of it a lot and a lot of items that you're supposed to jump on do have uh, hit boxes and hurt boxes at the fronts and backs of them also be dang it also be prepared to see those spears a lot because the level i'm alluding to later on is going to involve that spear also I, I would like to i would actually like to get on that spear because it's because you can ride on it but my uh Skill, as you see, is shoddy at best. Ah, I'm on fun time again. There is an audio cue of when you hear a boulder rolling that you can hop on it. I think what I'm going to do here, actually, is I'm going to try and be take it a little slower. I'm going to take it a little slower here so I have the hit, so I can kind of, for the most part, avoid this this uh, part coming up here. Okay, or I cannot. But yeah, basically... Jump from one to the other on these. And I'm... Yep, there we go. They oddly don't give that skull as a warning because these skeletons... Those, that skeleton kind of pops out right at the end. And they know for a fact you're pretty much at a point of death at that, at that moment. Now, I skipped over the name of this island, but this level is... This level is... Awesome, like this level is awesome for a lot of the set pieces it puts down and, and the storytelling because you know save the girl we're trying to save that girl we're, we're saving gems and that girl but also because it has just a pretty aesthetic now this part here is basically a chase if you're if you're booking it you can get to that plat that safety platform before anything goes awry uh, this part uh, we need that block but I'm a little, I'm a little scared to attack these guys just because of how they respawn. But like I said, we do need the, we do need these guys because we can't reach this place normally without this block. So, uh, if I timed it right, oh, of course they wouldn't pick it up. There we go. We need them for just a minute to bring that, to pick that block up, to take us to a higher level. Anyway, this boss fight is kind of a mess. Like, I say this boss fight is a mess because we have to use this triangle to reflect shots. Only problem is, with the project with the projectiles, it the projectiles aren't very strict on where they're going to be and what and which ones will hurt. Well, I guess ones do do hurt. Specific ones do hurt, so I'm kind of flying by the seat of my pants here on this one 
but basically if you stand right about where his feet is, you should get, be able to gather uh, gather at least one hit the reflect back. But you can also multi-hit on some of this stuff. And that's a reset. That's a re Well, it's not a bad reset, but it is a game over, so I have to redo that stage over again. Uh, something I will, something I can do at least, and I guess I can show it off with this game. This game does have a password system. So at the very least, if I don't get to show off everything in this game during the run, because I'll be honest, this is probably one of my least practiced, least practiced games I've got, I scheduled for, for this. Um, I can at least show off a little bit of the level I was worried about. In the, uh... The level I'm the most worried about for this run, and also the uh, and also the final boss. So, anyway, ah, uh, boy, there we go. I just basically gotta hope that the I gotta hope that the boys come over here some point soon. It's a waiting game at this point. Although I'm pretty sure at this point they're gonna teleport away or kill me. That works too. A lot of the pits that I'm sailing over throughout the stage um, do have safe spots in them. Yeah, a lot of the pits that I'm sailing over do have save points in the bonds in them. That's why I'm not getting checkpoints. So it's kind of a plus or minus of good and bad things. Anyway. Um, well, while I'm failing spectacularly and getting, trying to get back to the boss, uh, is there any, is there any, like, incentives or anything that I should, that we should know about or anything going on? Uh, none that are different. We still have, uh, our Metroid Prime Fusion Suit incentive for, uh, Bubba's Metroid Prime Any Percent Run tomorrow. We're still a little, got a little more than halfway to go towards that $500 goal. And we also still have that Donkey Kong Country 3 file name poll for Metroid Freak 400's run tomorrow. You have the opportunity to vote on three different options to name the file name, either T-Pose, Fonky, or Tree. Yeah. This is, this is the, yeah. This wasn't the stage I was the most worried about, but it's becoming the stage I'm worrying about. Just because the combination of the bosses kind of jankiness and how to get to the boss is a little rough. So my apologies for shoddy showmanship. But I guess to kind of heel turn from my uh, failure into something good, I hope everybody's having a been having a great time at the marathon is having a great day okay that was a weird interaction there we go i will say that like if i hit game over on this one i'll uh if I hit game over on this one, I'll go ahead and I'll use a password system just so we can see a little bit more of this and also to show off the password system. I was looking at a different monitor. I wasn't paying attention to what I was doing. That's on me for not paying attention to what I'm doing. I somehow walked into that shot. Mm. Okay. So that's a failure on my part. I'm going to try and... Uh, like I said, there is a pass system and I do have to... I do have to look things up for this. I should have gotten this ready in advance. So it runs dead, basically. I don't know if you want to stop the timer or whatnot, because I... I've messed things up to the point where it uh, basically is not a valid run, but I would like to show off more of this game than anything else at this point. So 
So the password system at the very least is we have to take these various items. If I can pick them up. Oh, can I not? Okay, I have to reset. Or can I just walk off? Uh, one moment. You might see emulation stuff on here. My apologies. That. And then I go to game start anyway. Uh, I'm a professional now. <laughs> so anyway, password system is to pick up these items. Oh, uh, can I not change anything? Does it, will the game not let me change anything? Okay, I can fix this. I can get it all set up on in the background. So one second here while I set everything right back up. So yeah, I'm gonna hit, I'm gonna just pick up where we left off at this point. There we go. The the places are the things are in place. So basically, these three blocks you're supposed to pick up and put in a specific spot. Now, um, where these places go will dictate. Uh, I guess I'm looking. I'm oddly enough looking at it right now, and actually, a lot of these make sense because kind of like a binary kind of thing of where they're supposed to go. There we go. But you can, you could, there's enough of a combination there where it's, you, where you won't uh, accidentally stumble upon an extra level. But yeah, basically, what happens from that boss fight, that last boss fight, you defeat the boss, you get the gem, ground, and then there's a cave in, which leads here. And we do have to wait for Indiana Jones, who we thought was dead, to come down and drop off a bomb to go through a mazy cave. A hazy mazy cave, if you will. I mean, this one up is a bit of a, that one up is a bit of a bait. That one up is a little bit of a bait because it does. There's a there are false floors all over this place, but uh, for this level we actually have another power up for Peck, and we have to use it in order to get. I'm um, I'm waiting. He's gonna try it. There we go. Uh, we do have to use this power up to basically do everything here because uh, do everything in this level because there's a jump at the end that we cannot clear, no matter what. And, oh, I thought I went to throw one. But yeah, there's a jump that we cannot clear, and we have to pull three levels levers in this in this area, in order to get that, in order to fill a lake up with water to raise a log, so we can get across to the next area. Basically, fall through the false floor here, pull on this lever, which is one of three, and then we get this peck. I forget what it's called, but it's basically. It's basically a portable bomb. Uh, most of these, most of these enemies in here, which are skeletons, we uh, we actually cannot even stun. We cannot stun with our normal with our normal peck or even our jump attack. But this but this particular peck can destroy everything. But yeah, we do need to go back through the the rest of this level as well, because. The last switch is basically back where we started, where the extra life was, so to say. Yeah, and like I said, these skeletons cannot be harmed by your jump attack. I'll show that off really quick. I guess they can be, but they cannot be permanently destroyed. Also, that was a risk. I guess the equivalent I can give, because everybody here is mostly familiar with Mario World, is basically defeating a Dry Bones. You can do it with a Starman and a Cape, but nothing else. Otherwise, they come back. Now, uh, that's basically the equivalency in this level but with that we actually have flood of the river over to the right here which is not here uh, I will say thankfully those treasure chests do respawn so so you're not left without a so you're not left without your friend here to assist you but that's the only time we actually see that 
And now we're moving along to the last set of levels, which has... We're moving along to the last set of levels at this point. Starting in Visconti's Castle. Which has a, a grand foyer level, which is nothing but run to the right and you're done. And then you have this part. Now remember how I said that that there was a rough level I was thinking of? This is the one. Because for, for a lot of this level, you basically have to go use these spears and go up the level on these spears. And it's not like, you know, five, six, seven spears. It's like 20. Okay, timing's off. Timing's off in the spears too, which isn't great. And also I need to get to the other side of the room to make this work. So I can actually see the spear coming out and then prep myself. All right, gonna be, I'm gonna be kind of, I'm gonna be kind of listening for audio cues throughout this. So if there's any, uh, if there's anything to mention, I guess now would be a time. And stuff like that can happen. There we go, now I got the rhythm down. Now I think if, I think some, I think uh, more practice speedrunners of this game can actually, if they do it right, they can skip two spears at a time. But as is evident by myself right now, I'm not what you would call a practice speedrunner of this game. I love this game. Uh, okay, didn't plan for that move. Thankfully, once an enemy is defeated, it doesn't respawn. But yeah, that's kind of the jerk move they put here. Is they put a bunch of flying enemies from the mine level and put it in here. So you either have to prioritize dealing with them or keeping on your platforming. And yeah, it's just... It is indeed a mess. And they don't just do it once or twice throughout this. They do it not just once, but they do it twice throughout this. Thankfully, after this level, it... This is the level I worry about the most with this when I do when I do a run of this. Cause once we cross this, it's over to a vertical climb level on automatic pl on platform on magical platforms. And then Hall of Mirrors. Oh never mind. I forgot about this level. Oh boy. Well, thankfully we get infinite hits with this level. And also we get to use the blimp power up more. So this level is mean in the fact that it doesn't expect like when you first go through this it doesn't it doesn't expect you to do things like dismiss peck from the blimp and then get back on it and then keep going but it does expect you to do like tight jumps like that to constantly to manage uh we'll say peck's air supply because as you're noticing as we're going throughout this peck is slowly shrinking while we're going through the through these corridors thankfully we get to re-up so yeah, it's a bunch of really tight, really, really tight jumps with the fact you have to manage a, basically manage a Lakitu Cloud at almost all times. Don't worry, we're not, we're not, we're not screwed. They do have this over here to re-up. Anyway, I want to bring both these machines over here to the right as much as possible to get around it. But yeah, this is the part in particular that I was like, they make you manage this really closely. But even though we lost Peck at the end there, that's it. <sighs> anyway, the tower, no enemies, but it is a vertical segment that's basically, that's basically instant death throughout it. Now, thankfully, these platforms are semi-solid, so you can kind of just phase through them. But there are a lot of very risky jumps throughout this. Because of the platforms moving at different speeds and all that jazz. Uh, you do get a tell for where the platforms are at the very least, because it does have this sparkle trail on it. And 
I think with one or two more hops here, we'll actually be at uh, the safe part of this tower. As I proceed to fall off on the, on my planned jump. Y'all ever see somebody choke? <laughs> uh, I shouldn't degrade myself this badly, but I tend to a lot. I guess I'm gonna go a little bit concentration mode here while I make sure I get my jumps down properly. I get, okay, I'm actually, oh, we're at the end. I died right at the end. Tends to be a curse of a lot of people. It's just dying right at the end, isn't it? Anyway, the Hall of Mirrors. So this is the level that you can do without using this invincibility move. But this move kind of makes this level a joke. Because basically what they want you to do is... There's a reason why it's called the Hall of Mirrors, but it's also, there's also a reason why... There's also a reason why it is a mirror, because it's going to deal with illusions a lot here. Not a huge amount on this portion... But basically, it, it's going to transition here in a second, like right here. It's going to transition here and give you a minute to get a breather. But now, you more or less want to watch both your your character on both the top half and the bottom half. Because there are, because the mirror shows the true, basically shows the true pattern of everything. Which is why I say, using Panic moment came in, which is why I say using this move does come in handy. Also, it is an auto scroller level, so well, thankfully we do get a moment to re up here. But because it's an auto scroller, they don't have checkpoints built in. So if you mess up one point here, you mess up the whole point. Also, I hope you enjoyed seeing yourself in a normal light because now you aren't. Uh, something I will say about this move is it does refresh. Uh, it does have like a cooldown timer on it at least. So, not, so it's not like you're permanently invincible the entire time you have it up. Because I think after about 5 to 10 seconds of it being out, it dissipates. As you saw there. Thankfully that was the last, that was the last uh, jape. And now we move on to the final boss. Which... This boss sucks, but it is also, when you know what's going on, it is very easily telegraphed what's going on. Much like, I guess much like with the Mega Man boss more than anything, because he has, there's a lot happening, but if you stand in one to two spots, you're golden. Also, forced cutscene, so I can't skip any of this stuff coming up here. Well, she's dead. Anyway, say hi to the beautiful face of Visconti. Beautiful is, is subjective. Well, we just kind of have to wait here and let him do his stuff for a bit. Also, if he reels his arm back, arms back like that, he's going to do a lightning attack. That's when you want to... That's when you want to... Use this up move to pull out the invincibility. Because you can dodge between the lightning bolts, but it's more or less luck. It's more or less luck to dodge between the lightning bolts simply because they are random. Kind of like the mole's falling rock pattern from the way in the beginning of all this. Anyway. Now we can actually fight him proper. Basically we have to blow this up and jump up on top of him on top of here. And this is kind of a multi-phase fight. No. Oh. Apparently he was invincible. Lesson learned. Oh, I'm going to reset that. I didn't need to jump. Okay. 
Well, let me try once more. Unfortunately, I think we have to go through this long cutscene once again. Oops. Sorry, I clicked on something to adjust on my screen. <sighs> I will say, you know, I will say though, um, just because I am coming, I am keeping an eye on time and everything. Uh, I am coming, uh, I like time for the run, I should say. My apologies to Clock Runner, but basically, if I uh, come close to the end of my block, so to say, I'll probably end things off, end thing, just kind of close things off because. This boss fight does take a while and has a lot of preamble to it. Basically, what I really hope to show off here is kind of like the so so uh, somewhat versatility of this final boss because they put in a they put in a. Like, if there wasn't a lot of work in the other parts of this fight, this boss, this final boss here is a lot, has a lot of the work in it. Oh boy. A lot of this final boss is, this final boss very much has, like, a lot going on for it. Oh, I got stuck underneath the thing. Kind of hoping on RNG to be nicer to me here. Okay. I could take this, I could take that chance to go, I could take that chance to go up there and bop him, but I want to play it a little safe. Also gonna play it safe here again. Get up there. Okay, he's changed colors, so I think at this point. Is it at this point? No, he's still. Okay, he's throwing a lot of spears. I kinda of have to wait for him to do something that isn't the spears so I can actually get up there. There we go. So phase two, he takes away the ride. So no more ride. But now we have we have another way to get up there. Which is and he's not doing it, of course. RNG manipulation, baby. We basically have to ride on this ball, if we can get on it. And if we got it on first cycle, it would have been enough to get up there and hit him on the head. But unfortunately, we don't get the free we don't get the Free roam, so to say. No. Well, I don't know what you were doing, but no. Okay, he's doing the spears again. I'm gonna wait for this. And now we get our chance. I guess I'm taking it a little bit slower here, because I did a little faster when I was... When I was prep... Uh, did a practice run uh, earlier this week. But... I don't think I don't think I have it in the cars to do what I was doing on my practice run anymore. Okay. We were waiting for that or the lightning to come out or his lightning strike to come out so I can get a chance to get up here and hit him. Okay. So now we're back. So now we're back. Where it's basically lightning strikes and his magical orbs, magical balls, if you will. There we go. It's kind of a it's kind of a rough window to hit with in between, especially with how the controls work in this game. Especially like that when I choke a little bit. Okay, good thing I stopped because that jump, he can hit you on that jump pretty easy. Oh boy. Now I could just tank hits and go up there and greet his face with my face. But he has more health than I, than I think. Also, I didn't. 
Didn't realize there wasn't a light to stand up there. I guess I've never tried to... I've never tried to brute force this boss in the past. There we go. He's gonna try to strike, strike me down. Throw, throw your balls. More balls. Okay. Is he on to... Yes, he is. Or no, he's not. Okay. He kind of turns this color when he's on his last hit. Or No, okay. He goes to this. So stay away. Stay away. Run away. Prepare to jump. And now it's basically a fist fight with him. Anytime he... It's basically punch out rules where if he does anything, just prepare to run away. Dang it. <laughs> I forgot that he can teleport. From the top, everybody. <laughs> And I was worried about the spears. Uh, do something that isn't... Thank you. I was about to say, do something that isn't the spears, please. And I totally got lost. I totally got lost in, uh, we'll say, dash dancing on them. That I forgot that I should have... I need to work on the air ride. There we go. So he destroys the ride. No more ride. No more pimped out ride. But thankfully, he is deciding to throw balls in my face now. I know what I said. Being very kind. Dang it. I say being very kind, and then he does it. Okay. Uh, fun thing is that those balls actually do not hurt you on contact, unlike a lot of his attacks. So if you miss a cycle and kind of roll off the side, don't worry about it. Like here. Or I tried to stop and show it off, but yeah. The balls don't have don't have hurt collision. They just push you around. And now he's deciding to just. Now the RNG has decided. No, all lightning. Oops, all lightning. Well, you saw that I kind of just rolled off of it. Nah, I had to stop myself from going for it. Oh, dang it. You know what? I'll take I'll just cheese out a hit. I'll cheese out some hits. Okay, now we're on to the last phase. Alright. Wait for him to do anything. Okay. I may have a hint of masochism in my past. Alright, I will say... Like, this isn't a uh, proper run regardless. And I kind of want to make sure I don't go over time for runs that are coming up here. So, I will say, win or lose this time around, I'll probably... Call, I'll probably uh, call it myself. Uh, call myself on the run overall. Cause to go through that whole preamble to get to this boss fight again is to go through that whole preamble to get to the boss fight again is gonna take enough time. Where if if I do get KO'd, it's not gonna be friendly for the marathon, so to say. Fantastic lag. <laughs> it 
There we go. Up and on and off. That's something I never, never try to do. Is if there's enough, uh, if there's enough, if I can actually land on his second ball he makes in that pattern to actually just stay in the air long enough to get around his eye frames and hit him a second time. I've never tried that actually. Thunderbolts and lightning, very, very frightening me. I'm frightened. Please hold me. I'm scared. I'm shooketh. I missed. Send help. I've rolled off of it. I'm just gonna ride, ride to say, ride to victory. There we go. Got another hit off. Okay. One more hitch do it. I could have taken the gamble there and bounced on that ball, but... I'm trying very much to at least get to the end of all this. And I would very much like to get there with that extra hit, so if he does, if he does bait me out during the... I guess I'm, I guess I'm calling it punch out section now. If he does bait me out in the punch out section, I can uh, at least have a spare hit. There we go. There we go. And yep. Gonna run over here. The thing is with this fight is he does. Uh... Oh boy. Not ready. I'm ready. And there we go. If you want a time, that's time. Not a proper time, but time. <laughs> oh, well, my nerves are a problem right now, but that's the end of it. Oh. I misjudged what time I had. Oops. <laughs> Oops. Uh, well. I don't know my timing apparently at all. I thought I was... I thought I still had uh, more to work with. Or less to work with for time. But we could at least see this final cutscene finally. Oh, but I will say. Artie Lightfoot. I do like this game a lot, and I do know it has a lot of down a lot of shortcomings and downfalls. Cause Titus, Titus knew how to make a game look good, but they didn't know how to follow through on it. It's again kind of the uh, Sonic syndrome. Yeah, Seven Crystal Games. So, to go over the story, because I skipped pretty much the entirety of the story up to this point. Um, basically, we skipped over a long cutscene at the beginning, which was describing that the set that there were seven gems of power that can grant the holder of them any anything they desire much akin to the chaos emeralds and uh which was told by an old man which we'll see towards the end of the credits here so we heeded the old man's request and started collecting those seven, seven gems to make some kind of wish i forget what it was i don't think it's ever described what the wish was in the first place but we head out, but we head out to get the uh, basically get those gems. Uh, shortly after we defeated Grounder in the mines, unbeknownst to our hero, uh, the lady friend there was kidnapped by Visconti, basically using it as a bait. And then we found out she was kid, and then we would later find out she was kidnapped by the Indiana Jones-looking guy. And uh, when that happened, basically, when we got, I think when we were going from the pirate ship to this, to the uh, Forgotten Island, 
basically at that point, we uh, we learned that she was kidnapped. So then we basically gave chase to Visconti's castle. And that's where the plot is leading to us now. Kind of a really phoned in plot, so to say, but the. Uh, eh. Didn't play this game for the plot. Anyway, I suppose I can wrap things up here. I, uh. I guess I apologize for organizers, because I'm. I'm ahead, way ahead on estimate, but also I. Didn't I gave I didn't heed my own leeway time because that boss fight that boss fight with the mech was pretty much my biggest time sink so to say. But I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, close things off here just by basically plugging myself uh, more thoroughly than I did before. My name as I said before my name is Prey Scooter. I'll go by Scooter. I also go by Tyler, though that's really more uncommon. I do... My big thing is on YouTube, I do Let's Plays. I do Let's Plays of just about anything and everything. I'm currently doing a Let's Play of Indivisib is yeah, Indivisible, which is a, which is a clashing of a, of a Metroidvania RPG and... Well, actually, those are the two clashings. Metroidvania RPG. Oh, and fighting game. It works a lot better than it might sound. Although, I think the video that's going up today is part of my Think Fast series, which basically is I go and I look at games that, that just came out. I basically take a quick 45 or 15 to hour long look at a game that just came out and kind of present it as a review, but based on the, that time alone. Uh, I also do try and stream on Twitch here, uh, as often as po as often as possible. But at the very least, I stream three days out of the week: uh, Mondays, Thursdays, Saturdays. And if you are looking for me on any other social media, it's gonna be Prey Scooter. I have, I have the, I have the the clinch. I have the stranglehold on that on that username. But anyway, I'm gonna. I guess I am going to sign out at this point. Thanks everybody for having me here. I'll be back again later tonight with some Mario Kart 8. Which I'll plug that incentive for that when we get there. Of, I'll plug that incentive when we get there of... Hey, if you want to wa have me race as a specific character for four races, there is an incentive for that. Anyway, thank you everybody. And I'm going to sign out. Well, thank you very much, Scooter, for showing off Sonic R and Artie Lightfoot. We really appreciate your time and, and your entertainment. Uh, we are getting ready for the 12 p.m. bracket. We got quite a bit of time before then. So let's go ahead and review what we've done so far. So we're, we're inside of 28 hours into the stack game marathon. By the way, how are you all doing? Are you all enjoying this so far? I just, there's a lot of you here, so I'm just going to assume that we're having a great time today. I know I am. Uh, we've raised $7,535 for the Breast Cancer Research Foundation. Uh, I, as I understand it, later today, uh, there's supposed to be an interview uh, with someone from BCRF, Odin Spack, who will, of course, be conducting that interview. Uh, so that will be, I believe, happening at 5.30 p.m. Eastern time, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, feel free to correct me if I'm wrong on that. I believe it's at 5.30. Uh, in the meantime, uh, until we get to that point, we have more runs to do. Coming up at 12 o'clock, we've got Tamal joining us. And at that point, I'll be handing over the reins to Madam Wario as our new announcer. Tamal will be playing through Rune Factory and Final Fantasy Adventure. And then after that, Tamal will be taking over as announcer, and Madam Toadstool will be playing Kelly Slater's Pro Surfer uh, from 2 to 4. And then after that, we have a Mario Party minigame race between Madam Wario and Slim Kirby with Sizz announcing. 
And I believe right after that, we're going to have an interview uh, with uh, someone from the Breast Cancer Research Foundation. So lots more in store for the rest of the day. Uh, really glad to have you all here. Uh, and I'm glad to be here. You know, announcing for uh, a marathon event like this, it's very different. It feels very different from doing just a regular live stream. Uh, not only because the gravity and the importance of what we're doing here, raising awareness about uh, a disease uh, that uh, a lot of people struggle with, and we want to make sure that we support uh, those people in uh, resisting it, in uh, the treatment of it, and in the research of it. Uh, but also, just this is this has taken so many people to organize and put together, and uh, I'm extremely proud uh, of every single one of you that has decided to be a part of the art team, uh, sharing on social media, announcing, uh, doing runs of the game. It's not an easy feat to. Uh, practice for uh, a gaming run and do that in front of dozens of people uh, under a little bit of pressure uh, especially when you have to sing <laughs> uh, so anyway uh, I'm going to hit the mute for, for a moment I'm going to listen to some tunes if you have any donations that you would like to give during this time feel free to do so we'll be right back hello this is Power to Mario again uh, FYI, we do have, coming up tomorrow, really to one of our target goals, uh, Bubba is streaming at 12.30 p.m. Eastern, Metroid Prime Any Percent. We have a goal to reach of $500 for him to use the fusion suit while playing through the whole game. The fusion suit is a, an alternate uh, colored suit that Samus can wear inside of Metroid Prime. Uh, we are currently sitting at $230 towards that $500 goal. So if you would like to see that happen, we have we have the rest of the day to reach that goal. Uh, we also have a poll for any donations that you send in. It will go towards one of three options for Mega Freak 400's Donkey Kong Country 3 file name. Mega Freak 400 will be doing that run at 6 o'clock p.m. Eastern tomorrow. Tomorrow, uh, The options for the file name are T-Pose, Funky, and Tree. You also might have seen that pink Wario crochet on screen before. At 4 o'clock p.m. Eastern time, we're going to be doing a giveaway of that crochet that Madam Wario created. Super cute. I didn't know I would be able to say that about Wario, but here we are. Wario is cute. So if you would like to be a part of that giveaway and have a chance to win, be sure to be in chat at 4 o'clock p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. And also thanks to your generosity during this event, we have another giveaway we were doing at 10.30 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time of that Steel Series headset. We're just giving everything away today. Also, I know we've been shouting out the tech team, we've been shouting out the art team, we've been shouting out the announcers and the runners, but let's give a hand for all the moderators that we have uh, in the Stack Game Marathon chat, especially since every single block of time that we've scheduled for this entire weekend, there is always a dedicated moderator that stays up, whether it's all night, morning, afternoon, evening, there's always somebody there to make sure that uh, chat is having a good time and we don't have any hiccups there. So thank you very much to all you mods. Well, alrighty, everyone, I'm going to go ahead and wrap up my announcing duties for Stat Game Marathon. Uh, the next time you'll see me, Power to Mario, will be at 7 a.m. Eastern tomorrow morning. I will actually be doing a Pokemon Red speed run. Uh, there should be some incentives uh, between now and then for that run coming up. And there's also a very special, exciting little spin that I'm going to introduce to that run that you won't want to miss. So I look forward to doing that and being a part of that with you all. Uh, you feel free to follow my Twitch channel. It's twitch.tv slash Power to Mario. On Twitter, I'm also at Power to Mario. Uh, thank you all for joining me during this four hour block. Coming up, we have Madam Wario Big Bobo will be announcing uh, for Tamal. I'd like to encourage everyone, you know, we've raised over $7,000 in a 24 hour time span. That's impressive. And I'm not going to say that we can't do that again. So I would like to just encourage everyone to keep the pace up. 
share this with all your friends and family and anybody you know that might be interested in watching this and even contributing to this cause. Uh, we've done an excellent job so far. Uh, so no matter what happens, uh, pat yourselves on the back. Uh, thank you for your generosity. And I'll see you later. Stay tuned for tomorrow.